Yo, 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 what's cracking, everybody? So today I'm coming in with the very first episode of my new series titled Mixing 101. This is gonna be a pretty long series on the channel and how it's gonna work is it's gonna start off with a lot of really basic mixing tips. I'm just gonna be going over a lot of the default plugins in FL Studio and explaining how to use them. But then as time goes on and I get more knowledgeable as a producer and more videos come out covering the groundwork of mixing, I'm gonna start leveling it up to more intermediate and advanced tips. So, you know, if you clicked on this video after seeing the title and thumbnail, I'd imagine you're probably more of a new producer and hey, there's nothing wrong with that. We all start somewhere. Just know that you're catching this series at the perfect time. If you keep following the series, more and more stuff is going to come out that's going to keep you educated and keep you progressing. Either way though, let's just jump into section number one where I'm going to be covering what exactly is an EQ. So right here on the screen, we got Fruity Parametric EQ 2. This is the default EQ inside of FL Studio. And before I explain exactly what an EQ is, first you need to know a little thing or two about sound. Sound is simply just a wavelength that moves at a particular frequency. The human human ear can detect frequencies ranging from 20 hertz up to around 20,000 hertz. So every sound that we hear on a daily basis, not just music, but sound in general, it all lies within this frequency range. And then music would be a combination of these sounds that are put together with artistic intent. So what an equalizer, or an EQ for short, allows us to do is it allows us to modify the volume of certain frequencies. So if we take a look at Fruity Parametric EQ2, down at the bottom of the plugin there are measurements for all the different frequencies. So down here in like the 20 to 100 hertz range, this is gonna be where a lot of your bass frequencies are. Things like 808s, kick drums, you know, bass lines. In the 200 to 5000 range, these are going to be like your main instruments, you know, your pianos, your guitars, your vocals. And then anything above 5000 hertz is usually a drum. Specifically things like hi-hats, crash cymbals, maybe snare drums. So an EQ is going to allow you to either boost the volume of certain frequencies or cut the volume of certain frequencies. So that covers the basics of what an EQ does. Now we're gonna move into section two. And this section is gonna be about when you want to use an EQ. Most of the time when you use an EQ, it's gonna be because a sound that you're using contains frequencies that are negatively impacting the mix. So let's say you're using a keyboard sound. Normally you would want your keyboard sound to be somewhere in the mid range, like around the four or the five band. Generally somewhere within this 200 to 5,000 Hertz range. But let's say this particular keyboard that you're using has a lot of low end in it. It has a lot of these lower frequencies below 200 Hertz. When you're mixing your beat, those frequencies may make the bass line muddy. It might sound really like muffled and kind of squashed together with the bass line in a way that's not really ideal. So you can use an EQ to drag one of these bands down and it'll cut out any of these low frequencies in the sound. However, a big mistake a lot of new producers make, and I'm guilty of making this mistake, I've made it for years on end, is that they use EQ to modify sounds that could be changed through better sound selection. So what I mean is if you have a really shitty drum sound, let's say your kick sound is just terrible, it's garbage, right? People will still try to use that garbage kick sound and then just try to use EQ to fix it. This is not really something you want to do. Not necessarily because it causes any issues in the mix, more so just because it's a band-aid for poor sound selection. As a producer, you don't want to have to rely on your effects for your beats to sound good. You want to be choosing good sounds right from the jump. You want to be recording in good sounds right from the jump, and you want to be able to design your sounds inside of your VST plugins in a way that sounds good without effects. So if your kick drum, for example, sounds really bad, don't try to use EQ to fix that. The first thing you should do is you should go through your drum kits and you should try to find a better kick drum. Or if you recorded in the kick drum live, it could be a recording issue. Maybe head back into the booth and play with where the mic is positioned. Re-record the kick pattern in a few times and make sure it's coming out as clean as possible before you add in an EQ. All right, so I've been talking for long enough. I figure now we should move into section three where I actually demonstrate how to use EQ. So you probably noticed that there was actually some visualizer activity going on inside of this EQ. That visualizer is basically showing you where this sound lies on the frequency spectrum. So now I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like to cut out a lot of these low frequencies. And this is called a high pass filter. And it's called that because you're cutting out the low frequencies and you're only allowing the high frequencies to pass through. So 
So if you have a pair of earbuds or like a nice set of headphones on, you probably were able to hear that difference. If you're listening on like a phone speaker or a laptop, you know, it might've been a little less noticeable, but you probably still heard it. Now I'm gonna demonstrate doing the opposite by dragging down this upper band in the higher frequency range. By dragging this down, I'm creating a low pass filter where the low frequencies are allowed to pass through and the high frequencies are being reduced in volume. You know, a lot of the time in professional music, if it sounds like a certain part of the song just goes underwater, usually a low pass filter is what's responsible for that. Now, another little thing in Fruity Parametric EQ is by going up here to these little knobs, you're able to modify the shape of each band. And it's all color coordinated. So, you know, the one band would be the purple knob, the two band would be the pink knob, so on and so forth. So by scrolling up and down on these little dots, you can change the steepness of the curve. You can see I'm modifying this seven band and I'm making it a sharper and sharper cut. And then by scrolling on this little symbol above the dot, you can actually change the type of band. So by scrolling down, you can see it completely changes what the seven band looks like. And with the seven and one bands, by far the most useful one of these is this one where it just creates a hard cut and then you can modify the steepness of that. You could also use EQ to boost up certain frequencies that you wanna emphasize, but you wanna be careful with this because it can get out of hand really quick. By boosting up frequencies, you gotta remember that you're boosting up the volume. So this is gonna impact your overall mix. So you know, you really wanna keep your boost pretty subtle. So those changes definitely were a lot more subtle and harder to notice, but they do impact the mix and it is something to be aware of when you're using an EQ. You also may have noticed that I was able to change the curve of these by scrolling up and down on the actual knob that I'm moving. And you know, in Fruity Parametric EQ, that's just another little feature to adjust the accuracy of your EQ so that way you can really get the sound that you're going for. And overall, even though Fruity Parametric EQ has this nice visualizer where you can see where the sounds are on the frequency range, still make sure that your EQ with your ears, not your eyes. We listen to music at the end of the day. We don't look at music. So even though it's nice to get a, a little reference of where your sounds are on the frequency spectrum, you don't want to EQ just by looking at this. You really want to listen to it and make sure it actually sounds good in the mix. So overall, that sums up our first episode of Mixing 101. This is the start of the new series, and I hope you guys stick around to see the rest of it. And the reason this series is getting started actually is because of one comment I saw. I'll put it up on the screen right now, but basically this person was just asking if I could go over some of the more basic effect plugins and explain what they do. So this one person is responsible for the Mixing 101 series. Remember that, you know, when we're like 20, 30 episodes in. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you could use these tips in your own music. Leave a like if you would like, and I will catch you next time, foo.